COJ Nation, let's join Pastor C.A. Thompson as we continue our study on the fruit of discipleship. And so, and so if you have consistently nothing to show for your walk with Jesus, then that means you're bearing no fruit. But now let me pick you up. I got to give you a quicker picker upper. The good news is if you fall in sin, you got an addiction, you got a habit, you got some quagmire things that you're doing that drifted you from the call of God and the things that God has assigned you. God is still able to move you from bearing no fruit to bearing fruit again. Are you feeling what I'm saying? But it's going to require something. And I want to put this something in one word and you need to write this down. It's going to require you being repentant. Jesus says something about a group of people in Revelations chapter 2 verse 5. You don't have to turn there. He said there was a church that had become apathetic. They become barren. They wasn't producing. And it is true that even churches and ministries can hit states of unfruitfulness. And what he said to them in Revelations chapter 2 verse 5, he says, Consider how far you've fallen from me. And listen to what he says according to the NIV. Repent and do the things you did at first. I'm going to say that two more times. He says repent, repent and do the things you did at first. If, if you do not repent, I'm going to come. This is in Revelation 2 and verse 5. I'm going to remove the lampstand from you. I'm going to remove from its place the things that I, I, I put there to help and assist you. He says, but I need you to do what you did at first. And I'm talking to 50 people right now. God says you're not producing fruit. There are areas in your life you want to see some things. And the resolution to get you back on track. You need to repent. I don't need to teach you no new philosophies. I don't need to teach you no theology. He actually says you already know what to do. You don't need a new sermon. You really don't need a new teaching. You need to go back to what you used to do when you was hungering and thirsting for Jesus Christ. The first thing you used to do when you got up in the morning, you used to go to the Bible. But now the first thing you do, you want to call your boo. The first thing you used to do was pray. Seek God. God, how do you want me to go to work today? How do you, how do you leave me? Do, do you want me to drive this way or the other way? And you discovered that when you follow the voice of God, he may have taken you the long way to work, but you end up saying the long way was the safest way because once you got to work, if I'm in your Kool-Aid, come on and go to the chat box and say that's me, then, then you found out it was an accident that you didn't know about, but God knew and he protected you because because watch this, you had the passion for consulting with God. Proverbs 3 says, lean not on thy own understanding, acknowledge me in all thy ways and he will direct your path. You had, you had a couple of people who interest you, but you didn't just go with the package that looked good. You say, God, I need you to direct me. Before I go out on the date, before I go out for dinner, I want you to direct me and you were blessed because you were following God. Once you left the direction of God, and the supervision of God, now you find yourself in these areas of challenge because you're not doing what you did at first. Am I helping anybody? And God promises that when you keep me first, if ye seek ye first the kingdom of God and what? His righteousness. Go to the chat box and say all these things, all these things, all these things. He wants to work on the all if you can keep him first. I don't know who that's for, but I believe I'm teaching the 25 people. He says, let me work on your all. All you got to do is keep me first. I'm going to say it again. Let me work on your all. You just keep me first. Stop Stop worrying about 20,000 things. Stop worrying about the top 10. Keep me number one. I'm going to work on your all. Am I talking to anybody? If you want to start producing fruit, leave the all to God. You focus on keeping him first. First in your marriage, first on your job, first in your dating, first in your career, first in your schooling. Keep God first. Am I helping anybody? And guess what happens when you become repentant and say, God, I acknowledge I wandered from you. You didn't leave me. I'm making a U-turn back to you. 
And the only thing that happened to you, you were pulled like Adam and Eve in the garden. They didn't intend to be pulled. You were pulled by the suction of sin. Glory to God. I feel God in this place. Or you were pulled by sin seduction. Am I helping anybody? Because sin is seductive. Can I talk to somebody? And, and you were pulled by either or. And, and so you just got to repent, go to God, and the stuff that you were doing at first, God told me to tell you, go back to it. Go back to it. Go to the chat box and just push. Go back to it. 1 John 1 and 9 tells us, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all your unrighteousness. So what will he do as it relates to the vine? He'll pick you up. He'll lift you up. He'll cut you off. And he will restore you back to what? A level of fruitfulness. That's point one, no fruit. Let's go to point two. The first stage of fruitfulness is no fruit. The second stage is some fruit. Write that down, some fruit. There are some people who are bearing fruit for Jesus, but they could do a lot more. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, what does he do? He removes them. And John 15 and 2 says, so he prunes every branch that produces, highlight produces fruit, so that will produce what? More fruit fruit. You see what God is involved in? More fruit. So every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it so that it will be even more fruitful. Now, now you got to understand, it sounds like he's talking about a tree, but he's really talking about relationship because Jesus is divine. And union with Jesus is really what he's talking about. In order to bear fruit, you got to be connected. And that's why he uses the word remain, which is a verb in John 15, four through seven. Look at the word remain verses nine through 10. Look at the word remain because he does not just want you to bear fruit. He wants you to bear lasting fruit. Write that down through the passage. Uh, Jesus is expecting his disciples to bear fruit. That's that's what we just read. And what are some of the results of fruitfulness? And I want to give you this. Write this down. One of the results of fruitfulness is that according to John 15 and 7, you'll be able to operate in bold prayer. Bold prayer. Write that down. 15 and 7. That's number one. Number two, a part of the result of you being fruitful, you will have a confident assurance in God. That's John 15 verses 9 through 10. Write that down. I want you to study this later because I want you to be fruitful. I don't want no barren people. I don't want you to be barren no longer. I don't want you not to be producing in the places because as we read in Isaiah, he's worked too hard so that you can produce. He left the world in the hands of believers who become disciples to bear fruit. Watch this. Not only does he um, give you the result of fruitfulness of bold prayer, confident assurance, but according to John 15 and 11, he wants you to have complete joy. Write that down. That's number three. Complete joy. And then your fourth one that he wants you to operate in, according to 15 and 12, read this, study this. He wants you to have the fruit of devoted love. So, so, so what is Jesus saying? He said, my father want to make you clean. He wants to prune you. He wants to do everything so that you can produce. And so when I understand this, I understand that Jesus is talking about his disciples being his friends, not his servant, because he's saying, I'm going to lay down my life for you which puts the relationship with Jesus on different footing. So the result of our love for one another comes from Jesus' love for us. If he laid it down for us, then as disciples, we should be willing to lay it down for our fellow brothers and our sisters. So when he mentions, I am the vine, ye are the branches, he's telling us, and defining for us what God wants from us. What does God uh, expect from us? 
He uses the word fruit six times in our text. And this entire chapter of chapter 15 of John, he uses the term fruit eight times. And he actually says uh, in the verse eight, God, the father, get this, is glorified when you bear much fruit and become my disciple. Now, now we're in the discipleship course. It seems like he connects the two to much fruit is connected to disciples. So if you're not producing fruit, then maybe you're not a disciple. Maybe if you're not producing the kingdom of God, you're not producing convert fruit, character fruit, uh, 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 and the, those types of fruits, then you are not a disciple. And we studied that uh, earlier in the teaching, Galatians 5, 22 uh, through 23, the, the character fruit, the conduct fruit, and the conversion fruit. Are you feeling what I'm saying? So this is a person who is producing some fruit, they're sharing the faith, they're investing, they have a few people they talk to, a few people they encourage, but guess what? They only do it when it's convenient. They serve God, but it's occasionally. And so when you look at your life, are you in this category of producing and fruitfulness where things have to be perfect for you to do the Lord's work? And he seems to suggest the reason why you're not producing is because you're a little distracted. And many times people say, you know, I would love to serve the Lord. I would love to give him, but I'm so what? Busy. Can I talk about this in our time? I would give God more time, but I got to do this. I got to work on this. I get home. I got to do this. I got to call this person. I got to do all of this. And so and so what you're doing, you're, you're crouching out the time that God has in your life and you're spending it on everything. You are doing some good. And you even say, I wish I could do more for the Lord, but I'm so busy. Because the pace of your day is so busy that it chokes out your fruitfulness. And Jesus put it this way. Your life has been crowded out by the worries of life, the lure of wealth, the desire for other things so that no fruit is being produced. Go to Mark chapter 4. Are you getting anything? I want you to be pr productive and fruitful for the king of kings. If Jesus is expecting it, and according to Isaiah, the owner is preparing us to do the will of God, he's preparing the vineyard. I believe even a pandemic is still an opportunity for the body of Christ to be fruitful. What more glory do we bring God if there, uh, uh, there is a massive harvest of conversion fruit? That the people are part of the body of Christ is growing. They're standing on the word of God. They have the complete joy. They're operating in boldness. They, they believe in the assurance of Jesus Christ. It will actually gain more attention now than it did before the pandemic. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know this is radical, but if you're going to be fruitful, you got to get some radicalness in your body and in your spirit. Glory to God. Mark chapter 4, verse 19. Listen to what it says. But the worries of this life, highlight worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth. You run after it and you never acquire it. You run through people, you run over relationships, things that you should be valuing, you don't value. And the desires for other things, highlight other things, come in, and what does it do? It choke out the what? The word of God. And listen to this. You highlight this. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Making it unfruitful. So if you start running after all of these things in the world, you're going to become unfruitful for God. And God is saying, I desire you. I get glory when you're fruitful. I get glory when you're helping young men. I get glory when you're pouring in the women. I get glory when you're investing some of you and other people because that's what I did. 
When Jesus Christ was here, if you really look at the life of Jesus, and I know this is going to be a tough uh, pill to swallow for some people, but I'm talking to some bishops, some apostles, some people who are going to make a major difference for the kingdom. Jesus did not invest himself in thousands of people. He may have ministered to the thousands, but he invested himself in the 12. I'm going to say it again. He may have ministered to the 5,000, to the 10,000, but he invested himself into the 12. Your life is going to become more productive. Stop trying to invest yourself in thousands of people. You got to invest yourself in those, watch this, that you can show the way of God, you can pour to them the truth of God, and you can disciple them so they they can disciple others. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Glory to God. The kingdom will only advance when you stop trying to do that with the great number. You get bigger by getting smaller. I know we say we got to get big. No, you got to get smaller. Jesus moved ministry. He ministered the masses, but he invested in the 12. That's why he went up the mountain. We talked about that earlier uh, in some teachings a month ago. So he could take the 12 to pour into them. You're trying to pour into too many people. You got to have people. You invest your time. You invest your prayers. You share some oil. You invest some of the ingredients and the pearls that God himself has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so what happens when you get caught up in this world? Stress is going to come in. Anxiety. And you're being robbed from being fruitful for God. So now let me go to this last one. We want to move from no fruit, number one, to some fruit, number two, to more fruit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? More fruit, or like to call much fruit. John 15 and 5, and we're almost done. John 15 and 5. Are you getting something? I love the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Shout hallelujah. John 15 and 5 says, I am the vine, ye are the what? Branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him. Now notice, I am the vine, ye are the branches. If a man remains in me, I in him. So before he gets to bearing much fruit, he puts more importance on relationship. Write that down. Remain in me. That means that you've got to be connected to me. I'm the vine, you're the branches. We're connected. What flows through the vine, help me somebody, it gets in the branches. He says, the people who are producing much fruit and the potential to produce much fruit is the person who's come through a season of being pruned and God is producing fruitfulness in their life. Notice the relationship. We're connected. These are people, they're seeing people come to Christ. Conversion fruit, they're investing in people spiritually, they have people they pour into, they're assigned to reach them. Sometimes you assign the people for a season. So don't don't misinterpret uh, uh, that there's some people that he assigns you to work with, maybe a year, maybe a two year, maybe to get them from first uh, stage one to stage two. There might be some he has you to minister to from stage one to stage three. But you understand that. And you're not assigned to do it all for them. They need to do it for themselves. You should be leading them. You should become what a GPS does for us. Give them guidance on where to go. Give them guidance on how to get there. Uh, reaffirm to them when they're on the right road. God is at work. There's more that you want to do for God and God is going to use you to produce more fruit, fruit that is overflowing and abundant. I want you to picture something in your head. Picture a basket and a basket of fruit. Then picture a huge harvest of people who's touched and transformed by God through a person's life. That's what Jesus has in mind for you and me. That we are to use our lives to advance the kingdom by touching people's lives, pouring into them the word of God, investing in them time, prayer, labor, and wisdom. And he says in the Bible, not only are you going to produce much fruit, but you need to understand the power of relationship. Look at verse 15, the last clause. He says, apart from me, you 
can do nothing. Go to the chat box, say, can't do it without Jesus. Can't do it without Jesus. Can't do it by your wisdom. Can't do it by your education. You can only do it by Jesus. And watch this. When you remain, that means you're going to continue. You're going to be used by God. It means that you have committed yourself. A, brine, a vine and a branch stays close. You got to stay close to God. You got to spend time with him in prayer. It's not to tell people you're praying. It's not to tell people you're at this level. It's to share with God that you're committed to him because your source of strength. Can I talk now? Your source of joy, your source of wisdom doesn't emanate from yourself. It comes from God. Write down, he's my source. He's my source of direction. He's my source of empowerment. He's my source of grace. He's my source of direction. God is my source. And so maybe the reason you produce more fruit is because at this stage of much fruit, you're totally reliant on the power of God because he is divine. I am the branch. And I must remain in him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now watch this, and I'm closing. Just like the branch that's cut off from the vine, what happens to it? It eventually withers up, and once it withers up, it loses its usefulness. When you cut off a branch from a tree, can I go back to Isaiah chapter 5? When you cut up the branch of the tree, normally it's going to break or you might do what they do down in the south, just put it all together, you might burn it up. Glory to God. And Isaiah says, if God takes the protection off his vineyard, everything in the vineyard will be trampled over and overtaken. And so whenever God cuts you off the tree, there is no source to keep you going. But all you need to do, child of God, man of God, I know you've experienced some challenges. I know you've experienced some weaknesses. I know you experienced uh, being uh, uh, the suction of sin or the seduction of sin. But if you repent, turn around and make a U-turn, God will reconnect and you'll start to get the flow of love, the flow of direction, the flow of help the flow of life, even the things that you saw withering in front of your very eyes. Psalms 1 and 3 says your leaf, <laughs> glory to God, will not wither. Lift your hands, child of God, and say, I want my relationship back with God. I, I went in some wrong directions. I, I, I dealt with some things I shouldn't have dealt with on my own, but at this junction, I want God to lead me. I want God to, 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 to direct me, and I want the flow of God back into my life, and everything that I touch, I want it to turn green. I want it to be blessed. I want my family to be blessed. I want my finances to be blessed. I want my my relationships to be blessed. I want to produce. I want to move from no fruit to some fruit to much fruit to give glory to God and give God a praise right in your bedroom. Glory to God. I'm closing. And I want to share with you, believers, have these questions to ask yourself because God has called for me to teach this in the midst of a pandemic, being fruitful pastor, you can be fruitful even now. You don't have to wait for things to get better. God will make it better. You don't have to wait for things to turn around. God will turn you around. You will be a flower growing out of a desert. Ask yourself this question. What stage of fruitfulness are you in right now? Don't ask your spouse. Don't ask your girlfriend. Don't ask your children. What stage are you at? And from this teaching, you ought to know what do you need to do to move to the next stage of fruitfulness. And listen, finally, ask yourself this. What will it cost you to produce much fruit for Jesus? Do you have to leave some things? Do you have to reprioritize some things? Do you have to push to the side your worry over the all 
and make your priority thinking about God. And if you love God, he has the propensity to take care of the all. Are you getting this people of God? I'm excited over the goodness of God because God desires you to be fruitful. He wants your relationship to be fruitful. He wants your business to become fruitful. Single, you're single and saved. You got so much going on uh, for you now for the, for the King of Kings and the glory of glory and the glory of God. He's going to manifest things, but you got to understand, you got to remain fruitful. He is divine. We are the branches. I want to close in a word of prayer because it's God's desire that you will have an impact for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And the Bible says in Proverbs, he or she that winneth souls are wise. Helping people, investing your time in people. Disciples are not just disciples because they sit because if you're sitting, that means you're taking the grace of God. We studied that in vain, but disciples are those who make disciples who make disciples. Let me pray with you as we close. Father, we thank you for every believer who's joined us to learn about the stage of fruitfulness. We thank you for revealing areas that we need to improve in. We thank you for showing us through your word what your view of fruitfulness is. We thank you for showing us, God, that you've invested too much in us to be in a season of no fruit. That you've invested in us and you're expecting not for us, according to Isaiah 5, to produce wild grapes or poisonous grapes or anything that's bitter to the taste. But you want us to produce the best because you are the best. And you went to Calvary's cross for us. I pray for every soul, every family, every single, every seasoned saint that we will strive to produce much fruit for your glory. In Jesus name we pray and count it done. I want you to give God a praise. Somebody shout amen. Listen, my time, my time is up. I'm not out of message. I pray that you're being blessed. Men of God, women of God, city of your nation, city of your partners. Please don't forget to sow into this ministry. We have at least four ways for you to give. You can go to our website. Go to our website, cityofjoygm.org. We have a giving page. You can give through Givelify. You can give through Cash App. You can give through Text to Give. Or you can write us, P.O. Box 250, Clinton, Maryland, 20748. And your offerings and your seeds you can send right here so we can keep preaching and teaching and spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. I pray for you partners, continue to sow into this ministry because we're excited. If you want to become a part of this church, you can sow, not only sow, but you can go to the website and you can write in under connect with us and you can become a part of the city of joy. One of our awesome, amazing new member ministries will be glad to share with you. VIPs, we thank God for you. We love you. Don't forget to subscribe. If you subscribe, we can guarantee you that you'll receive all of the fresh godly content sharing the word of God that can help you in your life. Can I tell you as we close, if somebody asks you, over the next few days, how are you doing? Please tell them the joy of the Lord. It is our strength to next week. Be blessed.